And then Thursday, the police came down again, but this time with the council. Uh, they weren't very, um, they weren't as blight as last time. They were a lot more aggressive as regards, you shouldn't be doing this, you shouldn't be doing that. But we asked if we were breaking any laws, they said no. Uh, but this time they had a, uh, a witness from the council who was uh, stood in the background, um, who then didn't really say anything. But then on the Friday, they came down again and then issued us with a fixed penalty notice. So they visited you how many times before So they... four times. They came four times. Every time they said you were fine with what you were doing. Correct. Uh, you weren't breaking any laws. Correct. You asked them how you could change things in order to be compliant and all the rest of it. You did everything you could. Um, but then the fourth time they came, they find it was a thousand pounds. So they find us a thousand pounds, yes. I'm here in Bolton on another Fight the Fines case. This time, a man called Steve Young, who runs a sort of football pitch for people to have a kick around. Now, he's been told by the police multiple times that he's okay, he's in line with the law, he's fine to carry on business as he has been uh, during lockdown. And then suddenly he gets hit with a thousand pound fine with no explanation. Since then, the police and council have gone back and forth on what he can and can't do. He's getting little clarity, but he's still got his fine. So we're here to help Steve to fight his fine. We're gonna go and speak to him now. We had a visit from the local police uh, who came down, I think it was on a Sunday, and that they'd, uh, apparently they'd had complaints. So they came down, had a look at the venue, said you're doing everything right, um, everything that you've, you've got in place is um, you're not breaking any laws. Um, so they said, obviously carry on business as, as normal. So we did do. Uh, and then I think it was a couple of days later, we got a, a letter from, or an email from the council asking if we were open, uh, as to what extent we were open and what, um, what service we were providing. So we just said we were providing facilities for um, support groups, uh, local drug and alcohol groups, mental health groups. And then um, I, I then asked if they could confirm if we could then stay open because we're part of a, a, a we're also a recreational facility, um, not just a sports venue. So then we didn't hear anything back from the, the council then. And then I think it was about three, three days later on the two days later, it was on the Wednesday, uh, the police came down again um, in the evening all this time to check and see if we had, if um, everything was being adhered to, which it was. They had a look around, a walk around the venue, uh, again, to see if uh, everything was okay and in place, if it was COVID compliant, which it was. And then Thursday, the police came down again, but this time with the council, uh, they weren't very, um, they weren't as polite as last time. They were a lot more aggressive as regards, you shouldn't be doing this, you shouldn't be doing that. But we asked if we were breaking any laws, they said no. Uh, but this time they had a, uh, a witness from the council who was uh, stood in the background, um, who then didn't really say anything. But then on the Friday, they came down again and then issued us with a fixed penalty notice. So they visited you how many times before So they... four times. So they came four times, every time they said you were fine with what you were doing. Correct. Uh, you weren't breaking any laws. Correct. You asked them how you could change things in order to be compliant and all the rest of it. You did everything you could. Um, but then the fourth time they came, they find it was a thousand pounds. So they find us a thousand pounds, yes. But they only sent us the, um, the regulations mm. from the Coronavirus Act. Uh, they didn't really send us um, any sort of proof as to um, what regulation we were actually so they didn't inside. say you know section five subsection b or whatever they they just sent you the entire act they, they sent us the entire act um and and so, well actually no they might they might have actually said look under section regulation well regulation but they didn't they didn't show you any charge or say this is what you've broken this is where you've broken it this is when you've broken no, it they never. It, it was just more of a kind of, you know, hit and hope kind of thing. They thought they'd yeah. send it to you and try and intimidate you into closing down by sending you these sort of it seems threatening more, emails. It seemed more of an intimidation right. than anything else. And uh, what's the status at the moment? You appealed, didn't you? So we've appealed, uh, we appealed to the council, sent them a, a detailed letter back explaining uh, why we was open, what we was doing, why, uh, for, for what reasons. Um, and basically, it's as if they didn't even look at the letter. They just sent it back uh, with a, a, a standard, box standard letter that you get from any council. So they rejected your appeal? So they rejected our appeal, yes. So what's the next step? 
uh, hopefully try and um, reappeal if we can. Uh, reappeal the, the fixed penalty, like I say, we feel it is unjust. Um, we are providing a service and a facility for people who do need us. Um, and uh, we'll, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll try to fight the appeal. We're, We're going to do everything in our power to help you fight the fine, uh, especially because this is all in the name of public health, these shutdowns, lockdowns, etc. And, uh, you know, what you provide as a service, you would argue, is in the favour of public health. So, you know, people who have alcohol, drug issues, people with mental health issues, and just in general sport, playing football is good for your health. So, you know, this, this whole thing doesn't really make any sense when you think about it, that you're being fined for in some way endangering public health when you're doing so much to help it and protect it. Yeah, and that's, that's our thoughts. That's our thoughts. So I'm here in Manchester where I'm speaking to Catherine, who's part of the legal team who are fighting all of the fines that we are uh, fighting at the moment. Could you tell me from a legal angle what exactly this case is about? Yeah, so at the moment we've been informed by Steve that They've been applying social distancing, they've had hand sanitizer, they've been sticking to the COVID regulations. Um, they've told us that they've been visited by the police and not had any issues. Um, and recently in November, they were slapped with a thousand pound fine. Um, they've rejected the fine. Um, and we hope that in the next few weeks, they will receive a summons from court mm. and we will then fight that in court for them. They were actually visited there by the police three times before this fine. And each time the police said, you know, you're not doing anything wrong, there's nothing you can improve, there's no areas where you can come into compliance with the regulations, as it were, uh, that you're not already doing. But then, mysteriously, they receive a fine. Yeah, I mean, it's certainly something that they will be brought into play when we do go to court. I mean, it, it will definitely be mentioned that, as far as they were concerned, they were complying with everything. The police even attended. Nothing was said, and all of a sudden they were fined. So it certainly will be brought up in court. And, like, from a legal perspective, do you think the fact that the police said to them that you know, they were, they were in compliance with play into this because had the police done nothing, mm. they might have thought, you know, maybe we should close because of the regulations. But because the police actively said that they were fine, mm. that may have had some bearing on why they stayed open. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I can understand why if a police officer says to you, this is absolutely fine, you would understandably not do anything about it. Absolutely, yeah. Um, so, yeah, it would come into play, yeah. One of the other quite sort of interesting things is that they, they've sort of rode back on a certain number of areas in the law so for example you're now allowed to have uh, children under 18 can come and practice here but anyone over the age of 18 teams over the age of 18 can't Correct. and uh, today you got an email saying that some of the vulnerable groups are now being allowed to come back as well is that is that correct so in the in the in the, the recent statement from uh, from Parliament uh, obviously mental health groups and support groups and, and local drug and alcohol groups uh, were not on that, so they, they weren't allowed to uh, to take any part in any sort of physical activity. Right. Um, where I've had a, conf uh, a conversation today where they've actually been, I've asked one of our local groups to contact the council and the council have allowed them to take part in one of the sessions or in their sessions. So in a way, because this is such a, a, a swampy area legally, you're being told one thing one day, then you're being fined the next day, and then they're going back on it the next day, and it's it's just back and Correct. forth, isn't it? But yet you still have to pay this fine. Correct. In yeah. spite of the fact that they've rode back on this in, in a number of ways. And, you know, you're now put in a situation where you don't know which way to go. Because if you start to let these groups come back because they've told you you can, you might get another fine. Because in the past, they've told you you can do certain things and then find you. So why wouldn't they do it again? Exactly. Exactly. I mean, that, that's our thoughts. We've now, anyone who's contacted us, We've literally said, contact the local council. It's not necessarily the police. The police, to be fair, have been fantastic. Uh, but it's the council, I think, who are enforcing the regulations. Um, so they're the ones who, if anybody does want to carry on or continue playing football, whether they're over 18 or in a, some, in a support group or bubble, then they'll then have to contact the council and get authorisation. And they're sort of at a distance, aren't they? So they're sitting in their council chamber somewhere, making these decisions which really affect your life Lives, as well as the people who come here, all of the people who are recovering from mental illness and drug addictions and alcohol addictions and all sorts of other things. Their lives are affected by people sitting behind a desk somewhere who don't come down here, don't see it every day, they don't understand what's going on here, but they, you know, tick a certain box, send you fines and, and there's no common sense whatsoever. Yeah, no, there's not. There's not. They, they, they haven't got a clue. They've not got a clue what's really going on. Like I say, if they come down here and saw how involved 
the uh, support groups are and the drug and alcohol groups are and how important it is to them. It is literally, it is their life. That's all they talk about when they come down here and do that. And uh, I think if some of the members of the, the council came down here and watched how important it was for them and how it helps them on a, on a personal level, on a, on a physical level, a mental level, I think they'd, uh, they'd think twice about issuing fines. The history behind it is unbelievable. Um, for me as a child growing up, I used to pre pretty much live down here. I spent most days and nights down here. Um, and then when he had the opportunity to, to sort of uh, buy into the complex, um, you know, and keep it going uh, and then try and enhance it, then that's what we, you know, that's what I wanted to do. Um, so we just, we, we want to really keep a, a fantastic facility up and running for the children around here, for the adults around here who need it. You know, it's, it's um, we're in a bit of a, I don't know if to say a bit of a deprived area. Um, so uh, they need all the facilities they can and we just want to try and help out and do our best really. It seems to me like the council are not bothered whether, whether this business or any other business mm. falls. At home, if you agree that Steve has been wronged in this scenario, then you can help him out by going to fightdefines.co.uk where you can chip in, donate and support. And if you've had a similar situation, you can apply for our help there too. Thank you for all of you out there who are supporting fightthefines.co.uk and Rebel News. Without your support, without your views, without your donations, we couldn't do what we do. We are out here helping these small businesses, these family-run businesses as much as we possibly can, but it starts with you.